Okay, so today we are going to start the section on gases. Let me get a pen here. Okay, um, and so we're going to talk about the first section, which involves pressure, some gas laws, and then the ideal gas law. So let's talk about pressure first. All right, well, pressure, a gas exerts pressure on its surroundings. And so we can use what's called a barometer to measure that pressure that's exerted. Atmospheric pressure changes with either elevation and or weather conditions. So when you fly in a plane and your ears pop um, or like a storm is coming in and you can feel it, those are those pressure changes. So let's take a look at a barometer. So pressure is exerted by the atmosphere on this mercury. Now, considering mercury is probably not very good for you, I'm sure there are probably other things that we can use besides mercury. Um, but it exerts pressure down on the mercury. Well, the only place it has to go is up this tube. And so the mercury rises until it has equalized with the pressure. And then we can measure the height of the mercury, and that gives us a reading um, of pressure. There are lots of different units of pressure. You saw that it was measured in inches on the barometer. We can have millimeters, so millimeters of mercury is a really common unit. They're talking about the mercury that rises up the barometer. Or we can have what's called tor. So this is the height that the gas pressure can support in either the barometer or there's also another device called a manometer. Operates very similar. We've also got standard atmospheric pressure. So one standard atmosphere is what we would call an atmosphere. And that's also equal to 760 millimeters of mercury or 760 tor. So this is your conversion between atmospheres and tor or millimeters of mercury. We also have the Newton per meter squared or a Pascal. Um, in SI, pressure is equal to force over area. And so one standard atmosphere is 101,325 pascals. So here's another conversion factor that you can use to go from pascals to atmospheres and then up to millimeters of mercury or tor if you wanted to. Okay, so um, pressure of a gas is measured as 49 tor. Represent this pressure in both atmospheres and pascals. Whoops, okay, so let's do that. So we've got 49 tor. Let's do atmospheres first. I know that in, let's make sure 760 is correct. Yep, 760 tor is one atmosphere. So I know that in 760 tor, that's one atmosphere. And then all I would need to do is divide that to get my answer in atmospheres. Now if I also wanted to represent it in pascals, well let's do that real quick. So we've got 49 divided by 760, that gives me 0.06447, uh, looks like I have two significant figures, so 0.064 atmospheres. Now if I want to go to pascals, there's a direct conversion between atmospheres and pascals, so it's easier to just take our answer from the first part, and then go to pascals. And let's look it up and make sure we are using the right number, 101,325. So for every one atmosphere, there are 101,325 pascals. And so I'm going to take my answer in atmospheres and multiply. And I get 6,532, oh, that's a little bad, uh, 0.796. So still going with our two significant figures from the original, I've got 6,500 pascals. So you're, probably, you're going to want to know those conversion factors. Okay, let's talk about some of the different gas laws. So the first law we're going to look at is Boyle's Law. This gives the relationship between pressure and volume. And so we have what's called a J-tube that's closed at one end, and this is how experiments were done with pressure and volume. There's an inverse relationship that exists between pressure and volume. So for example, if pressure increases, volume will decrease. So think about pressing down on a cylinder, you're increasing that pressure and you're decreasing the amount of space or the volume. So it's an inverse relationship. So this symbol here means proportional to. So volume is proportional to 1 over pressure because of that inverse relationship. We can use this to write an equation where P1V1 equals P2V2. And so we can use that to find different pressures or volumes. Now the thing that has to be the same though is the temperature. Temperature has to be constant. Only ideal gases, and we'll talk about these in a minute, um, strictly obey Boyle's Law. So it's a general relationship, but it's not always going to work out perfectly. Um, especially at high pressures, we're not going to see this. 
Okay, so let's take a look at a picture of what's going on here. So here is our pressure of one, let's probably say atmospheres. Remember, we've got constant temperature for both. Okay, here we have an increase in pressure, but let's look at our volumes. Here we're reading about four, I'm assuming maybe this is liters. Here we're reading about three. So as we increased the pressure, our volume decreased, okay, keeping everything else constant. All right, let's look at an example. So it says consider a 1.5 liter, so V equals 1.53 liters, sample of gaseous SO2 at a pressure of 5.6 times 10 to the third pascals. If the pressure is changed to 1.5 times 10 to the fourth, so that's our P2 or the second condition, at a constant temperature, so we know T1 equals T2, P1, V1, uh, what will be the new volume? So V2 equals question mark, that's what we're trying to solve for. Well, we know the relationship between pressure and volume with everything else being constant is P1 V1 equals P2 V2. If I'm solving for V2, I'm going to divide by P2, so that's going to equal P1 V1 over P2. Now I just need to plug everything in, so I've got my 5.6 times 10 to the third pascals times my V1, which is 1.53 liters divided by my P2, which is 1.5 times 10 to the fourth pascals. Now, as long as my pressure units are the same, I don't have to convert them. Same thing with the volume. But if I had an atmosphere for one of them and a pascal for the other, then I would need to convert so they each be this, they both be the same. Doesn't matter if they're both pascals or atmospheres, but they need to be the same. Okay, I've already calculated this for you. It comes out 2.5712 liters. If I look back up into my problem, I need two significant figures. So 0 0.57 liters is my V2. Okay, let's look at another law. This is Charles' law. It gives the relationship between volume and temperature. Now, unlike Boyle's law, where it was an inverse relationship, Volume and temperature have a direct relationship. So that means if you increase one, you increase the other. If you decrease one, you decrease the other. And so we don't have any one overs. They're just proportional. So that gives us a relationship of V1 over T1 equals V2 divided by T2. And just like temperature had to be constant in Boyle's law, pressure has to be constant for Charles' law. All volumes will eventually extrapolate to zero at the same temperature um, because negative 273 Celsius is 0K, which is considered our absolute zero. So let's look at an example with Charles' law. So we have a sample of gas at 15 degrees Celsius. So T1 is going to equal 15 degrees C. And we've got a P1 of 1 atmosphere. And it has a volume of 2.58 liters. We want to know V2. Um, if our new temperature is at 38 Celsius and our pressure is constant at one atmosphere. Okay, well, if we have a relationship for Boyle's law, V1 over T1 equals V, whoa. Oh, it's not letting me erase. Well, it's just going to be a little crooked. Okay, V1 over T2. So we want to solve for V2. I'm going to multiply T2. So V1 times T2 over T1 gives me V2. Now, we talked about before where if the units were all the same, we didn't have to convert. Well, the only case that that doesn't apply to is temperature. All temperatures have to be in Kelvin. Well, in order to go from Celsius to Kelvin, you're going to add 273. So I've already done that. Let's see, our first one gives us 288 Kelvin. And if we add 273 to 338, we get 311 Kelvin. So those are going to have to be converted, but all other units, as long as they're the same, are okay. So my V1 is 2.58 liters times my T2, which is 311 Kelvin. I'm going to divide that by my T1, which is 288 Kelvin. And I've already calculated this out. We should get 2.8 liters, and that's with two significant figures, which is what our problem states we need. Okay, so we've looked at Boyle's Law, Charles' Law, and now let's look at Avogadro's Law. This gives the relationship between volume and the number of moles. This is also a direct relationship. So if you increase one, you're going to increase the other. That kind of makes sense because if we're adding more moles, our volume has to get bigger. 
Okay, so similar type of equation as with Charles' law, v1 over n1 equals v2 over n2. Remember, everything else needs to be constant, so constant pressure, constant temperature. So let's look at an example. Okay, so we have our v1 is 12.2 liter sample containing 0.5 moles, so n1, of oxygen gas. What was O2? Uh, at a pressure of 1 atmosphere and a temperature of 25. So our P1 equals 1 atmosphere, and our T1 is 25 Celsius. If all this O2 were converted to ozone, so we're going to convert this to O3, at the same temperature and pressure, so this is going to equal P2, this is going to equal T2, what would be the volume of the ozone? So we're looking for V2 is what we don't know. Converting to O3 is going to give us our N2. Well, let's look at our relationship first. We know V1 over N1 equals V2 over N2. If I'm solving for V2, they give me V1 times N2 over N1. Well, I need N2. If the oxygen, the O2, is converted to O3, I need to write an equation for that. So I've got O2 as a gas going to O3 as a gas. Well, the only way to balance this is to have two O3s and three O2s. And so if I have 0.5 moles of O2, I'm going to use my mole ratio to convert to O3. I know for every three moles of O2, there are two moles of O3. And so I'm going to take my 0.5 and multiply it by 2 thirds, and that's going to give me 0 0.33 moles of O3. So now I can go back up to my V2, squeeze it in right here. My V1 is 12.2 liters, N2 I just solved for. And that's going to be divided by my N1, which is 0.5. And so if I calculate, that gives me an answer of 8.1 liters. Okay, so we can see that when we reduce the number of moles, we also reduced our volume.